Hey folks, Master Coex here. We would like to bring attention to you some of the more obscure and unusual facts about Dragon Ball here on this channel sometimes. Such as unusual merch like a Vegeta shower curtain, or myths about the story such as how Kid Buu isn't the strongest form even though he's the final boss. But today, we wish to bring to you a short and sweet video about some even more obscure facts about this series that you most likely have never heard about before. And if you have, do let the other ones find out and fair play to you. You know your stuff. If you want to stick around and find out more information about this series that you just so happen to like and you bother to click on this video, then like said video and subscribe for more future content in this field. Thank you. So, we think we know our Dragon Ball characters pretty well, right? I mean, Toriyama isn't one to share the backstories of some of them. You know the ones. Possibly thinking them as not needed to tell his story. Which is fair. After all, you can't write a whole backstory for every single incidental character you have. Unfortunately. Although mind you, have and I do like to think about it from time to time. We try our best. Even if it's some random goon, you never know, they might want to come up later. But that's just us. And yet there are some bits and pieces scattered amongst the Dragon Ball series that we believe not all of you know, which are either very illuminating, provide maybe some further background to some of your favourite characters, who very much need something for them. All these could easily be unimportant. I'll let you be the judge. To start things off, I wanted to remind you of something that you might have heard us talk about before, but it's a classic, so I would like to bring it back up again for the newcomers to this channel because there have been quite a few. They have to know about this. What am I talking about? Well, the idea of Earthworm Krill, that thing that Toriyama once mentioned in an interview, which we are pretty sure is 60% a joke, but we can never be too sure with Toriyama. Sometimes the most incidental of mutterings from him could turn out to be really significant further down the line. But if we do take the author at face value and his answers to questions very seriously, which I know some people do, such as why does Krillin not have a nose despite being human? Krillin could, according to the creator of Dragon Ball, breathe through his skin. You can see other quick answers to questions in the translation from the Dragon Ball Adventure special book here. Here is the actual quote, so I'm not making this up. Why doesn't Kudadin have a nose? Hmm. Kudadin has a physical idiosyncrasy that allows him to breathe through his skin. So okay, I guess it's some kind of physical quirk. Decades before My Hero Academia was even a thing. But of course, you don't have to take this seriously as it really does not impact the story in any way. But if we believe that the author was being serious, which is a big if, yeah, every time you look at Krillin, He's basically an earthworm, since they can breathe through their skin as well. Honestly, Dragon Ball's world is sometimes really wacky, that it can be his headcanon and it's not even the most surreal thing that he's come up with in his time, so we really don't know the full story and where it could actually go. Who knows? Krillin might need to bury underground and breathe through his skin, it might come in handy. But let's focus primarily on the original pre-Z Dragon team members, as well as the main punchers. Also, no Saiyans here since they have plenty of their own videos. We want to give the Earthlings a chance since most of the time they get short shrift. So whilst this first factoid today might not be the most obscure thing going, it's something we rarely think about. Yamcha was the first Z fighter Goku ever fought, as well as someone who had technically defeated Goku way before the likes of Mercenary Tao did. Think about it. If Yamcha hadn't been scared of girls and hadn't been distracted by Bulma simply existing, then that first encounter would have ended rather differently and Goku's relationship with Yamcha could have been entirely changed, possibly for the better. Perhaps his status in the group could have been higher. He wouldn't have been the butt monkey. He would have never fallen into mediocrity. Perhaps a future what if video? Who knows? But the real cool thing we wanted to share for this first point is this. Did you know that Yamcha had a theme song? Like a proper and actual theme song? It's called Wolf Hurricane and it's performed by Yamcha's Japanese voice actor, 
Toro Furia. It's actually quite a banger when you sit down and listen to it. We probably will include it in Revelation F actually, which we do recommend you listen to. The song, not necessarily the audio thing, but we'll provide a link up top for you for the actual music. We would share it here, but you know, YouTube. But we can provide you some of the lyrics to Wolf Hurricane translated to give you some context. They go like this. Cool looks, hot heart. I am the rumored nice guy, Yamcha. Oh dear. I'm no doubt strong, but with girls, I'm seeing a dream where flowers also shy away. You make me drunk with the bouquet of love. I always stare only at you. Please don't turn to me, because I get weak with your eyes. Lonely wolf, Yamcha of the desert. When the light of the stars strikes my heart, lonely wolf, even if the wind rumbles. So that to me screams of 80s ballads for anime for sure. It pretty much encapsulates Yamcha's overall tone in early Dragon Ball. And hey, if there is a Z fighter that is deserving of a theme song, it's our boy Yamcha. Come on, he's the first legit rival Goku has in the series. We don't count Pilaf since he never really for Goku. He was more of a typical baddie from afar. Yamcha though. He was a legit martial artist who gave Goku quite a lot of trouble, whether he was hungry or not, but since this is Dragon Ball, there has to be a hook or some kind of a joke. And that was, Yamcha was scared of girls. I was when I was a kid, actually. I went to an all-boys school when I was young, and when I went into a co-ed secondary school, I had crippling anxiety. So, Yamcha, my boy, I can relate. But he's not the only one that has some facts that very few of you may know. It's actually come up in recent conversation as of late, for some reason. But we wanted to provide you some additional context and perhaps some clarity. We're not sure whether or not we've talked about this before, as it makes us experience a very strong feeling of Dijon mustard. But even if we did mention this in passing, it was years ago, so I feel it's reasonable for us to bring it up again for the sake of the new subscribers. So do you know that there are some sources claiming that Ten Shinhan is not actually an Earthling, but instead he might be an alien, like Goku? Well, that's not quite true. It's more along the lines of him possibly being descended from aliens way back. Thanks to the power of the Wayback Machine, we were able to find Herms' translation of the Dai Zenshu 4 guide and the segment about Dragon Ball races and characters, where it is stated when it comes to the likes of our favourite Triclops that he is a descendant of aliens who use unique techniques. Ten Shinhan uses techniques that are impossible to think of being those of an Earthlings, such as growing arms from his back or splitting into four people. It's a small wonder then that Ten Shinhan is a descendant of the Three-Eyed People, themselves the posterity of aliens, and that he has a unique physical composition as a throwback to his ancestors. It is worth noting on top of that that Hirotaka Suzuki, Ten Shinhan's original voice actor, confirmed that notion. He did this in many of his interviews back in the day over the years. And if the guy who voiced the character believes that idea, that the person he has voiced for decades might be derived from extraterrestrials way back, that's quite a big note to take into consideration. He would know his character inside and out. There are some other things to take note of too, which might muddy the waters a little bit in this regard. In Legacy of Goku 2, the game claims that Ten Shinhan gained that third eye through intense meditation. But remember, the Legacy of Goku games were not developed with Japanese staff or companies in mind, nor did it have Toriyama's distinct oversight. It was an entirely Western creation with the blessing of Shueisha and Toei, just sort of going like, yeah, sure, okay. Will it make money? So when it comes to trivial information in those games, it's probably not the best source to stake your opinions toward. I think we can trust a Daisenshu more than a third party video game in that regard, can't you? Especially since that game series, not to take away anything from it, mind you, it is a perfectly good game, mechanically speaking, had its own interpretation of the overall lore, just as we do on this channel. So, you know, it's as relatable as some of our what ifs. Not taking too much of a big step now, we turn our gaze toward Chiaotzu. Now this little Pokemon is truly an enigmatic one, as he might have even less stuff revealed about him than his best buddy Ten Shinhan, than any of the other Z Fighters actually, making him the most obscure semi-regular character going. The same article that mentions Ten Shinhan's potential alien origins only tells us stuff about Chiaotzu that 
we already know. Psychic powers in a small body. He possesses various powers such as being able to change the numbers in a lottery and stop his opponent's movement. So you might be thinking that we're starting to really clutch at straws here with this and that it's not worth discussing, but do hear us out. Did you know that at one point in the history of Dragon Ball, Chaozu wasn't a mere lackey to a Triclops, but Chaozu was in fact an emperor? In the special Dragon Ball movie Mystical Adventure, which is a rather interesting retelling of the story in of itself, it seems to go ahead and put things in a slightly different order to the main timeline, but mind you, that was not the first time that this happens and it wouldn't be the last. Remember Path to Power. You see, Emperor Chaozu wasn't just a gimmick, this was a genuine kingdom. He had quite a notable group serving under him too. There was Bodyguard Ten Shinhan, Minister Shen, and General Tao, and General Blue of the Royal Guard. He also loses his precious Ranran, who is his doll wife. Yes, he had a wife. Not judging, I'm happy for him, but I bet nearly all of you didn't know that now, did you? At the same time, the rest of the Dragon Team are the same characters we know. It's basically an alternate telling of the story where the group meet the Crane School elite, but this time it's an emperor instead of a martial arts academy that they work for. It's further revealed that the whole plan laid out in the special was a ruse plotted by Shen and Tao to force Chaozu's soldiers to find the Dragon Balls, but they get thwarted in the end when they're about to betray their leader. It's a fun movie, but it's definitely one of the weirder alternate realities in the Dragon Ball timeline that we got. It's also the last of the original Dragon Ball movies, the last one before we headed on for Garlic Jr. in the Dead Zone for the first DBZ movie. Okay, moving on. We already joked about poor Krill Dog in his skin condition, and he was also notably snubbed from getting an appearance in Evolution. He really wasn't missed much if you ask me. And Path to Power, he wasn't even in that, possibly due to it combining aspects of pre and post Krillin stories. And, you know, a lot of people tend to joke a lot about the poor guy. The whole Krillin owned count thing. But according to the Dragon Ball Wikia, in January 2007, Oricon conducted a poll in which they asked Japanese manga and anime fans which characters from any anime or manga they would most like to see in their own spin off series. Krillin ranked third in the men's poll and sixth in the overall poll. Remember folks, this isn't a Dragon Ball specific poll, this is anime and manga wide. And considering the number of prominent Dragon Ball characters there are out there, getting well into the top 10 is really high. Krill Dog the Monk? Krill Dog the Crime Fighter? Oh, we don't blame them, he is really cool after all. And that's not our words too, it's 18s. Now Master Roshi is next in line for our attention, and you know that don't really know what this guy is actually called, his original name, before he got himself involved in martial arts. You see, both Master Roshi or Muten Roshi or Kami Senin mean Old Heavenly Martial Arts Master or Turtle Hermit. So the next time that somebody tells you off for not calling Roshi Kami Senin, it really doesn't matter. The funny thing is, is that there is one character out there that could know his real name, but they haven't told anybody yet. And that character is Chi Chi. He shows her his driver's license, and unless Chi Chi knows his real credentials from her dad, then he legally changed his name to one of those monikers. Which is hilarious if you ask me, and totally in his character, his overall portrayal. After all, given what he likes to get up to, having a nom de plume might be prudent. And that's it. Some lesser known facts about the original Dragon Ball characters. We hope that you didn't know at least some of them. If you know of any more extra special facts, do tell us in the comments. We'll probably make a round two of these sort of things with some of the alien characters, as well as the non-combatant ones. Leave a comment below and let's get this discussion going. And I will see you in the next video. Catch you later!